I uh, hope you guys are doing well this Friday and a happy webcamp to you all. Um, I'm Peter Chen. I am the uh, manager for the digital services team with the School of Medicine. Uh, we're part of uh, Stanford Medicine overall, which is, you may know, is part of the uh, school, uh, is, is the school and as well as the hospital, Stanford Healthcare. Um, our, teams, uh, we, our team has been in the process of uh, actually going through a unification merger with the hospital, which also has its own, uh, its own Adobe Experience Manager entity. So this is a, an interesting time and experience for the School of Medicine right now. We've been operating on Adobe Experience Manager for our content management system for um, five years, actually since just before I joined, maybe six years now, since just before I joined the School of Medicine. And um, it's an enterprise software program. If you, have, um, if you have not worked with Adobe Experience Manager, it's a bit different from say a Drupal or WordPress type experience. Um, it is an Adobe product and I will say to some, uh, and it's very WYSIWYG, so to some degree there is a little bit of the uh, history of things like Dreamweaver and, and so forth baked into it somewhere in, in the innards. Um, this talk today is really just to give you an introduction and overview about um, what the School of Medicine does with uh, Adobe Experience Manager. Um, give, um, we're interested in, um, in um, letting people know who, who are web builders, web designers, um, people uh, maybe have just a little bit of experience with doing web to learn a little bit more about Adobe Experience Manager, learn a little bit more about what kind of a web authoring environment it is. Um, we have um, over, um, actually about, we're, we're just about hitting 800 uh, websites in production on Adobe Experience Manager today. And um, that number seems to continue to grow. So um, there is a lot of, there's a quite a bit of customer base out there. Some departments and programs have their own experience authors. There are some contractors out there. We have all different kinds of people who are um, authoring for AM. So let me kind of uh, get into my slide deck and start sharing a little bit. Uh, so I can tell you a little bit more. Um, by the way, uh, my, my colleague, um, Zach Aiken is also here today. He is, oh, that's the wrong button. Um, Zach, there we go. Um, my colleague, Zach Aiken, um, is our uh, senior designer at the School of Medicine, and he will um, be more specifically walking you through the um, process of using Adobe Experience Manager. So um, I already introduced a little bit, and maybe tell you a little bit of the technical background about AEM. Um, it is an enterprise CMS solution. It's built by Adobe. It has its origins in a product um, called um, um, CRX or Content Repository Extreme that was built by a company called Bay.com and Adobe bought about seven, seven, eight years ago. Um, it is a Java VM type of solution, it, but it does not rely on Tomcat or anything like that. It actually runs uh, as its own um, as its own jar file on any Java capable host. Um, it can be run on-prem or in the cloud. Of course, lots of things are in the cloud these days, and in fact. Um, Adobe has its own um, cloud strategy uh, with a, what they call Adobe um, Managed Solutions. Um, AEM is also a common, uh, common on the AWS. And um, yeah, we've also seen it on Google Cloud Platform as well. Um, at its heart, AEM is basically a content management system, but it's got its differences and quirks from um, a, let's say a traditional database backed CMS, something like that, Drupal or, or WordPress. Um, it, it basically, everything is stored in the uh, JCR, the Java content repository, all the data, all the, um, all the assets and so forth. And the assets are managed in an entity that's part of AEM called the digital asset management system. And it's basically just a file system, everything gets virtualized, whether it's an image or a PDF or something like that, and gets made available to users um, or through owners of sites uh, through um, the dam. Um, AEM being an enterprise product is also integrated with many of the other Adobe products in their experience cloud. So there is um, 
launch and analytics, which are basically tools for um, inserting JavaScript for tracking and, and data uh, um, on uh, usage, um, uh, communities and so forth. Uh, there's also targeted personalization, so we can uh, also use AEM to create more personalized experiences for people based on location or, or what, they've, uh, what they've done for site before. And there's also Adobe Campaign Manager, which helps um, marketing teams manage their campaigns. Um, for authors, so we call our, uh, we call our everyday folks who um, write pages and build content and so forth, we call them authors. And uh, for our authors, AEM is built on a, a template and component-based system for, for building and designing things. So um, you could make it equivalent to the idea of themes in another, um, in, in another CMS. Uh, we are, my team, of, um, my team with designers and also working with um, outside agencies have built uh, for the School of Medicine a series of template families um, Zach will give you a little bit of an overview into these, um, and this helped. And we maintain and manage the design behind these content, uh, behind these template families, to keep a consistent look and feel. So authors just focus on the design. Um, components are basically um, little tool entities that you drop into the page, and there's a whole drag and drop mechanism to uh, to work with the components and a component is basically defined as a tool that can do something that can insert a text box or can um, it can insert a, um, an image or it can create an api or we can actually bundle a bunch of things together and do structural things with uh, components so we might have something like an accordion or a tab system uh, built with a component um, so uh, zach will show us a little bit about that um, underneath the um, underneath that system of how we work with components uh, in a, um, um, so as I mentioned, the templates basically control the authoring experience um, through what we develop, um, uh, what we develop through our, our developers and coders um, outside the out of the box experience for AEM. They can define what the template looks like, what are areas that can be edited, what are areas that can't be edited. So, you know, so you have a masthead or a, a logo area. Um, all that is predefined. It allows us to keep a, a look and feel that's consistent across the School of Medicine that give people the ability to customize, say, the name of uh, name that's in their logo. Um, we work with our partners in the School of Medicine Marketing and Communications Group to um, to refine the design, uh, to keep um, keep the brand uh, consistent, um, and to keep the experience consistent for our end users. Um, and the next thing in AEM, um, there we can also pull in data from APIs. So we do have uh, um, we do have a connection to CAP. In fact, we were um, very very early on because uh, CAP profiles was something developed in the School of Medicine. We we developed uh, an, a an early API data source to populate um, AEM's um, profile. So we have a component called Profile Component where you just put in somebody's name, and, you know, and, and the API pulls the data over. Please simple and straightforward. Um, and we also have workflows so we can do things like we can set time releases for, for pages. So um, oftentimes our news folks may have uh, something embargoed. They can, um, they can set a date and a time for that information to be published and can do it in the middle of the night without having really to do so. Um, and then I, managed the, I, may, I, I mentioned the digital asset manager for our resources. So um, AEM has a um, basically a directory system that's analogous um, to, I guess you could say, like your, your desktop, where you just you can drag and drop images, um, documents, things in there, and then depending on your permissions, you have access to uh, move those things into your components. So using a um, using a text component, or I'm sorry, using an image component, you can just drag an image into your uh, page and place it. Uh, where you need to be, size it, um, add, uh, add a, a control so you can expand the view of things. Okay, so going on, the AEM architecture. So those of you who are sort of interested in the basic uh, way AEM works, um, unlike some single entity content management systems, AEM has some separate uh, machine entities. There's the authoring system, which is what naturally all our authors will interact with. Um, 
and Zach will show us the authoring system. And it's basically where an author will log in and you'll find your site and you'll add a page or you'll edit an existing page. Uh, do whatever you need to do there. Um, all that is done in non, it's, it's part of the production system, but it's not public. So the authoring system is you can just, you can do it, um, do your page editing, you can preview it, you can, um, you can interact with it to some degree. Um, but until you publish it, in other words, you click on a publish or activate button, um, it doesn't go out there into the world. And when you do, when you do activate a publish a page, it goes to our publisher system, which is another Java machine and basically another separate entity from the author. And what that acts is, is basically a, a page generation machine. So um, publisher just has all the instructions on how to, how to produce a page out in the real world. And the third entity we have is called the dispatcher. And what the dispatcher basically is just a, is a, is a front end cache. It's an it's a Apache system. Uh, an Adobe Apache, I'm uh, sorry, an Apache um, web server system. Um, in the School of Medicine architecture, we have one author that sends data to four publishers that have four dispatchers in front of them. And uh, the reason why we have four dispatchers, it's, you know, like I said, it's like a front end cache. So we have a load balance that sits in front. Anybody who goes to med.stanford.edu will pull up any one of the four dispatchers and it helps manage the load and uh, you know, manages, um, manages the experience for users. So we have very fast, um, we have very fast um, time to live on pages using the dispatcher cache in, the, in front of things. Um, so what I was saying was um, author, um, um, author is a web-based solution um, for designing and building our pages. Um, it's basically a WYSIWYG experience and, and uh, Zach will show you what that's like. Um, the, um, it's, uh, even though uh, a lot of our authors tend to think of things as being one page at a time and they'll build separate pages and build hierarchy, there are in fact inheritable properties. Um, it will build site structure, it will build menus based on, its, um, based on the relative position of things. So um, a lot of our authors like the ability to control the hierarchy and develop their architecture uh, using the system. Um, published is exactly what I described it to be. Content is just put there. Um, and yeah, I already described the dispatcher, it's basically the front end cache. And uh, besides this, we, um, um, besides the production system, we also have uh, uh, staging development environments and we have, we're, we're a full development shop here at the School of Medicine. So we're constantly building and redesigning and adding new features and uh, new components and so forth. Um, so I, I started to give a little background. The School of Medicine websites, we have actually over 900 websites that are under the med.stanford.edu domain. Um, some of these are also virtual domains. So you'll find um, some entities like medicine.stanford.edu or bigdata.stanford.edu. These, these subdomains are actually um, served from our same AEM um, entity. Um, every author logs in to the same authoring system. Um, it's one entity, we can actually manage all the sites from that. Um, currently, we have just about 800 sites on AEM. I think I mentioned that earlier, but the med.stanford.edu domain actually manages more than that. We've got over 900 websites on there. Um, we've also got about 30 different applications that are also under med.stanford.edu. And we've got um, a handful, about 40, 50 legacy sites, things that are actually static HTML and the addresses are still under med.stanford.edu. So uh, we're actually putting a lot on our load balancer in front of AEM because it's not only directing med.stanford.edu traffic to med, but it's also distributing to these separate application hosts as well as some of these legacy hosts. Um, we're in the process of, of, of uh, deprecating a lot of our legacy sites. This would be equivalent to, I guess you could say AFS websites, you know, things that are web.stanford.edu that, that are static HTML. Uh, we're in the process of, of getting rid of the last 50 of these at this point and uh, hope to do so by the summer and uh, get a lot of these entities out there. Um, so just to let you know a little bit more about who we are um, before I turn this over to Zach, uh, we're digital services team. Our presence on the web is at uh, med.stanford.edu slash web. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Adobe, that, uh, 
you can uh, visit UW's website. I guess we'll make these slides available later. Um, and um, Zach, I can turn it over to you. Are you ready? Sure. Well, let's uh, let me share my screen now. All right. So I'm going to take you through uh, just the whole process that we go through of provisioning a site and building a site. And just to kind of give you a virtual hands-on overview of what this looks like. The, the first decision that we, we ask an author to make is between one of two templates that we offer. Um, the first one we refer to as Everest, which has a left nav. This one is a little bit more utilitarian. If you've got a lot of top level nav that you need on the left, um, it, I think it has three layers of information. This is used primarily for internal sites uh, and not, not so much for an external audience. We steer people looking for an external audience to what we call McKinley that has a more traditional top level nav and gives you a bit more real estate on the page for uh, design. We have a, another one that we use just for our top level that we refer to as Mauna Some of these components will be getting rolled out into Everest and McKinley uh, down the line, but right now this is set up for the grid system. It's a little bit trickier to work with, but it, it's used on our top tier. All right, so we're in AEM. I'm gonna bring up the site provisioning tool. That was a little bit of custom work here. And we'll call this webcam. And let's make it a McKinley site. You can tell that Sarah is a Star Trek fan. And what we're given is a basic sample site that's dropped in when we open this up. And it, we just went through a major revamp of this, uh, streamlining the amount of components that go on this page as your example, so that we don't overwhelm the user. We used to have a, a much more complicated sample site kind of trying to provide the kitchen sink and found that that really wasn't helping our authors a whole lot. We do have uh, other sub pages when the site gets provisioned of common page types that authors can utilize to, to copy or just to, to get ideas of basic page layouts. We can go into those in a little bit. So we've got the new web campsite. AEM has got a two basic modes, the author mode and the preview mode. This is our toolkit that provides all the various components that we drag and drop on the page to modify and, uh, and build as we wanna go. So the first thing I would do is in the site name, I can give it a name. Well, yeah, well I don't need it. And it's set up to dynamically build that logo quickly, accurately to fill that space. So as I mentioned, there's a, a ton of components to build the page. We try and focus on the basic ones like text. Um, our text component is a very standard out of the box, uh, rich text editor. Most people should have basic understanding of how to do this. And we explain to authors, if you can build a page in PowerPoint or you can build a PowerPoint presentation, work in Word, then using AEM isn't going to be that big of a leap. 
our training is fairly succinct and gets people going pretty quickly. We do have for those more uh, technically savvy that are used to basic HTML, we do have a source view in our rich text editor. So you could make very specific tweaks, but for the most part, we discourage using that. On the left is what we, what's called the content finder. So when you upload images into your digital asset manager, which would be found over here, it, you would simply just drag and drop an image into this space. And when you do so, it's gonna show up as the, the top item here. So as you're working on your site, the images that you upload into the dam will be readily available. The primary reason that we want to upload our images into the dam, and let me what a, grab an image here just for good measure. And we can show you what the back end does with this. It will create various renditions. Come on now, if I can click on it while well, it's being. There we go. So when we upload our, our image, the digital asset manager is going to create various size renditions. So depending upon the size of the screen you're on, where the image is placed on the page, if you're um, mobile or desktop, it's going to feed the right optimized image. So we're not always going to serve up a 1900 wide image when all we really need is 300. So now that that image is in, it's here at the top and it really, is as simple as dragging, dropping that image in. The usual image title gets placed there. We have custom crops set up for users so that as they're uploading multiple images into their, their site, we can get a good consistent layout for each one. Um, 16 by nine, well, 16 by nine isn't gonna work in this case, but I'll just use that. With this component that we call feature box, we offer a number of different styles. The, the idea is that a, an author with very limited skills can take what's out of the box, take what's on the page, update the headings, the features, whatever they need to do to make a very simple site. Those with a little bit more design skills, a little bit more knowledge can really personalize the site so that there's uh, an individual identity to each one. And we are working on other templates that can be dropped in um, additions to the McKinley template. And, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example of that. This is the, the, the sample site and what we're providing out of the box. But just by the choices you make and the, the component choices we make, we can get very, very different um, results. Here I'm still using the hero banner at the top. Oh, this isn't, sorry. Or we can do kind of a, a more classic one page single column layout that's 
got a bit more of a modern feel to it. Uh, we can make different choices to create a, a bold red heading, use colors and icons, and give it a, a own unique looking feel for each each site. We have the option in a lot of these, instead of choosing an image, because an image, as we, we try and explain to people, an image isn't always necessary. We don't need images for image sake. Sometimes you can say much more with an icon. And for that, we've integrated the font awesome icon pack into this so that we can choose an icon, choose a background color, and have that populate instead. Now, <clears throat> green's maybe not the right choice with the red heading, but it illustrates what we can do. Uh, something else that I wanted to show quickly here with, with my limited time, some of our other uh, component directions that, that we have, uh, news is a good one because we have list builders. And with these lists, we can either create based on tags coming directly from our news center, or we can build a list using a subdirectory from our own site. So if I create news pages, which I do have a, a couple of examples in here, I can choose this directory and it will take the basic information that's on these pages and populate them in this space. So we can, it doesn't have to be used just for news, um, but this is a, a really powerful tool for sites to build out a little bit more dynamic content. We've even seen some sites use this functionality to build things more like a blog. Uh, Stanford Medicine 25 is the first that comes to mind for that one. Another thing that we've integrated with is Stanford Profiles. And in this, we can call up any faculty name. We, we use Russ Altman most frequently as our uh, our, our, our poster because he is involved in just about everything. Uh, choose what type of title we want to display. And then we can show either just the, the basics of a, his title and a bio. And this is all polling directly from Stanford profiles. And what's really useful is we can show publications and even choose if we only want to show the featured ones, show 10. And now it's going to pull in his featured publications. Maximum of 10 looks like he just has seven. This cap integration is also used in creating people pages. And it can be done by either pulling in a dynamic name Let's see, it's wanting to autofill with my Gmail, that's useful. Sometimes we do have to refresh to, uh, to see the photo. Or we can pull in a custom profile that will format the same, but it might be an affiliate or someone who's not inside of uh, the CAP system. Other dynamic pieces we have We give an example of building a frequently asked questions page. And in our heading that we call heading component, the 
drag and drop from our toolbox here, we have an option to use it as an anchor. And when that is selected, it will automatically populate this anchor index menu for building long jump pages. And of course, we don't have a lot of information in here, so it's, it's hard to show off the, the use of this. But we, we try and create these little integrated pieces where we can to make things as simple as possible for our authors to create dynamic, useful sites. We have the ability to create email forms. It's very basic. Uh, it'll just collect information and send to an email alias. We can integrate CAPTCHA into this. But if we want to go with something more complicated, we have a good integration with Qualtrics. So you can uh, upload or you can create your form of whatever you need in Qualtrics and then bring that in using our external component to iframe it in. We also have a dynamic maps component. Pretty straightforward in, in using that. Some of the more uh, useful items that we have in here, lesser known that AEM can do, we have versioning which is really handy for authors who are planning on making some fairly significant changes to their site, just in case something goes wrong, they can create a version and then restore right back to it. Uh, currently, we're limited to only five versions and a new version is created each time we activate the page. So if there is Again, something that changes in between activations, user can go back in, restore their old version. Beyond that, and it has happened where things go wrong, we have to go back in, into uh, our side, but we can dig further back when an author does something really catastrophic, and it does happen. So maybe I'll go through just dropping an image on the page to, to show how that process works. Again, we, we choose what we want. Simple drag areas and drop our image on. This component in particular has a lot of functionality. We can give it our consistent crop. We can provide a caption. We've got a couple different options to customize that caption color. We can set the image to a specific width and we can even float that image, which works in conjunction with text link it and then uh, enabling a full screen modal gives us the ability to then you know drop this in above the text floats it over and then we have a uh, our full screen modal link that is uh, placed as a watermark over the image that then can bring it up as a full screen. Now, here is something I can take a quick uh, sidetrack on. That's not the image that I uploaded. And this is something we encounter quite a bit with uh, AEM and with browsers. That's the image that I dropped in there. And I have to do this so frequently that I have my cache cleared as a on my bookmark bar and have to, to clear our data cache. We are always telling our authors to keep calm and clear their cache. Now we're seeing the correct image. 
Um, Peter, is there anything else specifically you think I should, I should demo here? I know I'm just doing a whirlwind through some of our key features. Uh, or do we want to open it up for questions with the last, uh, what have we got, about seven minutes left here? Um, did you publish anything? Um, as far as activate? Yeah, or activate anything. Did you just want to show that real quick? Or? Sure. So I'll, uh, I'll go back into our asset manager to do this. It, what it shows is that these pages have been worked on, but they are not published. So if I go in to my toolkit here and I activate the page, first it's gonna prompt me if I want to activate the image that I uploaded and I do. This will give me a notification that the page has been updated. Um, and then I will activate not all, but maybe just three of these pages because maybe I'm not ready to look at education yet. And now it's gone green or activated. So let's see here. And our webcam page is here, everything but education. We also have the ability here in the, the preferences for these pages, the properties. We can activate this page, but perhaps we don't want it in the navigation. So I can turn that off. And now I'll activate the education page. Still not here, but if we had a link to it, it shows up right there. So um, with our last few minutes here, do we have any questions? Would anybody like to see anything else that we've got going on here with AEM? David, you've always got a question. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> it, it just happened this, to put your picture right below Fe Peter. So I, this is this out. is really great. I, um, it's really uh, awesome how powerful of a of a um, solution you've put together. Uh, some of the questions I would have is like, uh, you know, we just re released our D eight one, and we definitely took a little bit of a different. Uh, approach with our first launch of ours, which is simplify, 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 and you're you you're walking out out the door with a lot of complex functionality that is um, fantastic. How um, have, did you? What kind of research did you do to decide? Oh, we need um, four or five different um, feature card types, um, and, or was that just? A, was it more of a port uh, or a recreate the functionality that you had on the previous system and make sure that everything was still intact as opposed to build a new system where we're building a new system and you have to migrate your content into it. So it's a little different, you know, different situation for sure. So, so there, there's, there's two parts to that. One, when we set out to build this thing initially um, six years ago, we didn't know what we didn't know we had a, a series of designs and specs from a company called Hot Studio. And before they delivered all of their final specs, they were acquired by Facebook. And so we, we took what they'd done. And the idea initially was to give authors the power to create and customize their site. And a lot of those styles were based off of legacy styles. The feature box was a direct translation of how things on the old Dreamweaver site were laid out. And we just wanted to provide several options for that personalization. Now, about a year ago, we did a major design refresh where 
we we weren't able to get rid of all of those options because there's so much legacy out there and moving things over is difficult. But what we were able to do was really circle the wagons on design and unify how things work and how things look. So we have a text and image component and we were able to go back in and make sure that that looks and behaves just like another component we call color block. And, and all of that has the same layout and spacing and formatting as the news component and as the list components so that everything gets a much more consistent approach. Kind of like, you know, working in Photoshop, there's 10 ways to achieve the same look. And that's really been what we're working towards with this so that we can give you the freedom to design your unique site, but give you a very varying number of ways that you can achieve that. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. And kind of add on that is that also presents for us some challenges with the way some of our components have evolved um, because they're coming from different directions, the type of information that people input, you know, say you want to build a text and image or something like that, then the way the data is organized that you put in the component, like you saw what Zach was doing is, you know, maybe put a title in first and put in all these other things. And then a different component that renders the same, look, a very similar look comes with the data coming from a different direction. And so there is, there is that possibility of confusion about these components sometimes. So we try to design things, um, to minimize convergence, but it's sometimes it's unavoidable. We have to um, distinguish one component for the other for its utility. So we, thanks Peter. We, we had a, a question come in here. It says AEM help is difficult to navigate. Can you suggest some website where we can find better instructions? And I absolutely can. Also it would be great to have hands-on workshops on how to build and improve a website. And I agree with that completely. We have done workshops in the past. We do have, um, well, we used to have bi-weekly drop-in sessions where authors can come in and uh, talk to me or one of the members of our team to get help with design and help with uh, some technical issues they might be having. We're going to be moving those to, I believe, weekly on Zoom, but we have yet to fully set that up. And as far as instruction goes. Can I interject real on, quick, Zach? Because I think that that is a fantastic yeah. idea that we do something along the lines of uh, how to improve a site. And I will um, actually ask Marianne, who, who does our um, author outreach newsletter, see if we can put something out there where maybe we can get some submissions, find somebody who's interested in getting our um, kind of a public consulting about that. We can maybe pull, a, pull up a site that's been around for a while, see if we can come up with some ideas on how to help improve that and maybe do that as part of a workshop. Does that sound like something that'd be useful? Yeah, I, I like it. Okay. So on, on our site, we do have training materials for each of our components and we have laid them out very similar to the toolkit itself. So the, you know, right down to the granular things of how to build a button and the various button styles. So there's some really great tools here, short videos. Some of these are a bit old. We, we have a new member of our team who's working on new training as we speak, just finished a, a bit on box and we'll be helping with these. So, so yeah, check out our component tutorials and, and also on the website, you know, speaking of training, I'm, I'm just curious now from my own, how long ago was it? The Zoom sessions. At one point we, we did have some uh, presentations that we'd given on, on design posted on here they we might have finally end of life them because they were so old uh, we have another question about 
about given the COVID-19 outbreak and priority shifting is the May 15th date still set to remove or uh, unprotected SUNET protected content. The, the deprecation of SUNET protection, um, Peter, do you, do you want to try and handle this one? <laughs> um, well, so, so to, to explain, um, so AEM is a very public facing web system. In, in fact, there is, um, officially there is no internet, although we have the ability to create uh, pages and sites that are behind, um, uh, behind Senate authentication today. Uh, this is actually not the way Adobe has, has designed this product. Um, and for um, internet functions, we, we use a version of Confluence we call MedWiki. I'm going to actually put that out there for our end users. Um, we are currently in the process of planning, well, we've been, we're in the process of sunsetting um, pages and sites that utilize the authentication protocol partly because it's really a hack of Adobe's core software. It's not, uh, it, it's made it difficult for us to do upgrades. We're actually currently on version 6.2 and the latest version is 6.5 and there's some important um, updates and features we want to get out there to our community. So it's been a bit, bit of a blocker for us um, as of late and since we've now joined the Stanford Healthcare, we've been able to make some decisions here where we are going to the migrating sites that have the requirement of things behind authentication to, to make them um, MedWiki intranet sites instead of uh, relying on AEM. So um, if you are working with AEM today and you see the page properties, um, under the page properties, you have the uh, private page feature that will be going away. Now, May 15th, I will say is not hard in stone right now. There are some extenuating circumstances right now by which that may slide a little bit, um, but I can't really promise anything specifically about that. But it's it's a feature that unfortunately we are deprecating with the sign of AEM as it's, it's not supported by Adobe. Great. Uh, All right, well, I believe we, we've gone past our time here. If anyone has any last minute question, uh, now's the time. Otherwise, you can always reach out to me or Peter. My email is Z-A-K-I-N at uh, either Stanford EDU or Stanford Healthcare. I'll add those to the slides in there and wherever uh, we post these later, I'll make sure that uh, people can reach us through that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zach. All right. Good to see many of you. Please be safe. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, Peter, you can upload these on the uh, session webpage if you'd like. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. I'll do that before the other day. And we will try to get the uh, screen recording uploaded as soon as we can. It might be a month. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a happy webcamp. You too. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Cheers.